Hi all, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Let's start rebooting off using UI path. In today's session, we want to discuss about trigger scope. So basically, this trigger scope which helps us to start and then resume the action once it met the criteria. So let's take a real time example. So if you are going to download a particular file in a particular web page, right? So if this particular size of a file has been enlarged or extended, in those scenarios, your script may be get failed, right? So let's assume you are going to read this particular file after it got downloaded. Sometimes it will take 5 minutes, sometimes it might take 10 minutes, okay? So you are going to form the read operations once the file got downloaded. To make this buffer time, you made a delay, okay? So you may be kept only 5 minutes, so if it got 10 minutes extended, in those scenarios, you will get an uh, error. So it will be unable to read the particular file or unable to find the particular file to read, okay? So in those areas, you can utilize this trigger scope to understand the particular action has been taken care or not. So once the particular action has been taken care, proceed the further steps, right? So let me go to the UI Path Studio and show all the actions of a triggers. So here you can see something called as trigger scope, right? So this is a parent scope which help us to perform all the child operation. So how you have seen for an Excel scope or a word scope. So likewise, this trigger scope which supports all the operations, which is a process end trigger or process short trigger or file chain triggers, all kind of an operations can be performed inside this trigger scope. So let me drag and drop this trigger scope. So let me take a look on the property panel. So what actually it has. Okay. So here you can see more options. So which is continue on error. So which we have seen on all the activities. So if you want to mark it, and then so even though error has been occurred, it will proceed further, right? So we no need of take care on this. So we have a new option which is nothing but scheduled model, right? So we have three options which is sequential, concurrent and one time. So if you want to perform this particular action in your script for only one time, you can go ahead and mark the one time. So it will not keep on monitor the particular action. So if you want to make this particular action a sequential, which means if you want to keep on monitor the particular action which you are going to do on, then you can keep it as a sequential. So let me make it as a one time since I want to make it only one time. So after that, so in our scenario, so what actually the today's scenarios we are going to see. So we are going to download a particular appointment spreadsheet. Okay. So where your trigger scope going to monitor the particular file has been downloaded or not. So to monitor the file changes activities, we are going to use the file chain trigger. Okay. So let me drag and drop this file chain trigger. So this file chain trigger has the many properties. So you can see in events change type, right? So here you can see creator, delete, change, rename. So in our operation, we are going to check only the creator. So which means if you are going to download this particular file in a respective folder, it will get created, right? This new file will be created on the particular folder. So our operation is created. So if you want to monitor all the operations, so which means so in the particular folder you are going to monitor whether a file is added or deleted or changed or renamed. So all these steps can be utilized using this all option. So after that, so we are going to pass the path. So in which particular folder it's going to monitor. So whether what kind of an action has been taken care of in the respective folder. So we can go ahead and pass this output folder path. So which we have in a project. So let me go here, data, output. So let me try to provide this path. So or else you can just click on this folder icon and then pass that path. So let me click on save. So before that, let me make some action to download this particular file, okay? So let me drag and drop and click activity. So we need a two clicks. Perfect. So first click, we are going to highlight the particular file. Okay. So we can highlight this particular file. So any kind of file you can do with this. And then, so the next action, we are going to click on save. Okay. So let me click on escape. So let me try to click any of this file. And then we are going to highlight this save button. Okay. Indicate and then save perfect right so here you can see i have set this particular file to store in our output folder i have passed this particular path to the file trigger so let me click on cancel as in now 
So let me check the selectors as well. Okay, perfect. Let me close this up now. Cancel. Perfect. So we have made a click to download this particular file and save in a respective position. So our file trigger will monitor any new file has been created in the particular folder or not. So once it is noted, any file has been created, then automatically it will go to the action. So in this particular sequence, let me make it as more understandable as a trigger action. So here, let me make it a very simple note. So we no need to read now. So it's not our motive now. So let me make a readable note. File has been downloaded, ready to read. Perfect, right? So what actually this indicates, this file has been downloaded. So now you can go ahead and read. Okay, so usually how we used to approach, so we used to make a dynamic delays, right? So what actually the problem here? So if the file size has been extended, so the, your delay will be not sufficient. So it need a more time. So whenever you're trying to read the particular file, even it is not downloaded, it will get an error. So but here it will understand only the file has been downloaded and created in the particular folder, then it will go to the triggers action. So this is the main advantage of using this triggers, right? So let me click on save and then let me start debugging now. So let me wait for our script to get compiled. So once it's compiled, so our board will ready to get started. So let me go to the back screen. So it will be clicking on the particular file. So it has been clicked on the particular file and has been downloaded, right? Perfect. So here only one time. So the action has been taken care only one time. So you can see file has been downloaded, ready to read, right? Cool, right? So instead of using delay, we can directly go ahead and use this. So this will be very useful thing, right? So let's assume, so you have already downloaded a particular file, okay? So a particular person want to delete this particular file. After that, only your script need to be launched. In those scenarios, what actually you will do? So you can make deleted. So since I have made all, so we need to check all the options. So only this all will be enough. So what I'll do, I'll just comment off all these activities. Okay. Comment off and then comment off. Perfect. Right? So let me make very simple now. Okay. Let me change this particular right line. ready to start perfect so let me save this and let me debug this now so once it got started running you can see a idealness over here so it will be not performing any option it will be kept very ideal so what actually it is doing in the background it's monitoring the particular folder so whether any action has been taken care or not so kind of an monitoring it started doing once we started the process so like how you are using for a wait for queue right so like same thing so it will wait for until unless an operation has been taken care in the particular folder it has started running but you cannot see any actions right so once i clicked on delete over here once i deleted this particular file as soon as i deleted the file you can see the right line has been printed over here so let me try to delete this up okay Yeah, perfect. I have deleted, right? So you can see a right line file has been deleted, ready to start. So likewise, you can utilize this trigger scope for a multiple purpose. So it will be able to understand a file downloaded or file has been deleted, rename. So likewise, you can utilize in more ways. So start a process to end a process. You can see a couple of all the things in our next next sessions. I hope you like the session. Thanks for watching. Happy learning. Have a good day.